good afternoon everyone <clears throat> so before we start with how to achieve the 100% accessibility compliance i would like to start uh, with my brief introduction good afternoon everyone my name is vipul khandelwal i am product owner for x auditor at dq systems i have total 13 years of experience in this industry I started with as a web developer and then I moved into product management where I have worked in e-commerce domains. I have worked in investor relation domain for some time in healthcare domain as well. And now landed in accessibility domain, which uh, before working with different domains, I was not uh, even aware that how, what the accessibility domain is and how big it can be and how it, it is changing the lives actually. So yeah, I'm really enjoying being in the accessibility domain. Uh, this is about me and let's, uh, let's start with our agenda. <clears throat> so today I have a few points for, for all of you. When we say that uh, we want to achieve 100% of accessibility compliance, uh, let's start with the software development process, how our software development process looks like, where actually we do the accessibility testing, whether it is a right place or not to do the accessibility testing. And then we will cover that uh, why manual testing is important uh, in achieving the 100% accessibility compliance and what are the current challenges and difficulties we have in manual testing. Uh, and then we'll introduce uh, X auditor that how X auditor is simplifying manual testing and intelligent guided tool testing, uh, which in combined provides you the 100% accessibility compliance. So we will cover X auditor. Uh, in this point, we will also have a demo of X auditor, uh, which will also cover the new feature, the point four, which we have uh, our integration with X Dev Tools Pro's intelligent guided tool testing. So I will include the introduction of new feature, introduction of auditor, how the auditor works and how it solves uh, all the challenges which you may have for manual, uh, manual testing and uh, with the long list of uh, criteria which we have. All right, so let's get started. Okay, let's look at software development process and where the accessibility test happen. And in our software development process, we have different rules, like uh, maybe you are a QA in that, in that process or you are a developer. So before going into that very quickly, can we, can we know our audience? Uh, if you are a QA or you are a developer or you are a manager in this process. So uh, Srishti, can we run a quick poll, know our audience? Yes, if you, can, if you can just answer this uh, uh, question, what your current role is, it will really help us to uh, provide you the appropriate information. Okay, maybe another 10 seconds. All right, great. Uh, yeah, I think. All right, so yeah, here are the results we have and we have a great number of accessibility experts with us. Really great to know that we have so many uh, LNY experts today. Okay, so let's start with software development process. All right, this is a typical software development cycle you are seeing on the screen where we start with UX design. Uh, we do US research, which ended up with, with wireframes. <clears throat> and from those wireframes, uh, uh, we, we uh, develop our product backlog, the high level stories, user stories you create uh, from the wirefakes and the US research. And all those, uh, all those take into shape of a complete product backlog. From the product backlog, that start the iterative process, 
which we call a sprint in Scrum. So in that iterative process, uh, that product backlog, uh, uh, you create sprint backlog from there. This is where you start grooming your stories, refining your stories, putting more details into your stories. Developers do the development and sprint, QA team do the testing. And based on the cycle, you may have one week sprint or two week sprint based on your organization. Uh, usually that sprint ended up with shippable product. And that shippable product can be uh, deployed as a system. It usually we deploy, we generally deploy it on end of each sprint or end of uh, two sprints. It depends on everyone's requirement and how the system is there in, in your organization. So the uh, real question is where, uh, what is the perfect way right now, what in which, uh, in which step the accessibility testing is happening? The first and the second is what is the better way to do the access accessibility testing? So according to the studies uh, right now, this is the place where most of the people practice accessibility. So it is, it can be right on your uh, deployed system or just after the uh, shippable product. This is where the accessibility testing is happening. And uh, some of the st uh, studies we had and some of the case studies we, we read, it says that uh, doing accessibility testing at this point cost you, uh, cost you a lot and it uh, goes into multiplies. So I'll give you a context. What the study says, one of the IBM study, I think, uh, this is that if uh, all the issues or defects, if you can identify those at the time of US research or wireframes, so let's say uh, they cost you $1. And the same, uh, same issues, if you are identifying those uh, at the time of development, so they cost you $3, or we can say three times. And the same is happening in, uh, at the time of testing, when QA is identifying the bugs, it's cost, it cost you $12 or 12 times, we can say that it cost you 12 times. But if you are finding the same issue at the, uh, after the shippable product or on your production, it can cost you 30 times or $30. So this is the difference uh, which we have. So uh, this is where uh, DQ comes up with their products uh, along with the auditor. And uh, with all our, uh, all our products, which you can see on the screen, we are trying to shift the industry left. We are trying to uh, show that with the uh, different tools and products in the place, how you can uh, identify all the bugs, all you can practice the accessibility well advanced. So uh, last month we had, a, we had a webinar on design services. So according to that research, if uh, we can have all the, uh, all the issues identified at the time of US, UX research as well, so that can be that can be very quick, very less time taking, and it will not cost you as well. And same goes for X Dev Tools. It is more of a developer tool. The developers can test their work at the time of uh, development. Monitor can uh, monitor after the deployed system. But today, what we'll be doing is we will be focusing on X Auditor. How X Auditor can uh, how your QA team specifically QA team can uh, use X auditor and identify the bugs at that in the sprint cycle itself before the product is going is considered as shippable product. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the need of manual testing. So now uh, we are saying that uh, we need to uh, we need to achieve the 100% accessibility compliance and we all may agree that it is not possible with the automated testing only manual testing is a very important part of uh, the complete accessibility testing and at the same time it is becoming dif difficult as well the manual testing that uh, there are so many success criteria there are so many work at conformance levels uh, and there are so many uh, things which uh, accessibility expert need to know in order to complete the manual testing. So let's look at some of those uh, challenges. So on this screen, uh, you can see uh, you can see a screen which have uh, two steps: identify yourself and uh, choose an account. Then you can see login uh, with need an account and sign up button. Then you have first 
tell us who you are with three buttons, individual, financial, professional, and employer. So the question is, uh, <coughs> should the keyboard focus go to sign up or individual first? And uh, uh, to be very frank, I don't know the answer. And uh, the same case will happen with uh, automated testing as well. It will not be able to provide you that it should go to sign up first or individual first. And I think the reason is that it is very contextual. Uh, if you know the co context of your website, what information you have on your application or website, then you, you, are, you will be able to decide better that it should go to sign up or individual first. So I'll say that it is a very context-based thing which cannot be automated. For me, it can be sign up based on the content I will have on my application. For you, it can be individual based on the context you may have. All right, the second, uh, okay, let's look at some of the uh, success criteria. So uh, here I have VACAC conformance level and I have just included VACAC 2.0 and 2.1. So as you can see on the screen, VACAC 2.0 level A has uh, 25 success criteria. And if I'll include a VACAC 2.0 level double A, the number becomes 38. And the same with 2.1 level A, it, it has 30 success criteria. And if we include level double A, uh, it becomes 50. So the number is very large. Uh, accessibility expert or QA, they need to know a lot of things, a lot of success criteria in order to do the manual testing. There's a, a very large number and I, each success criteria have different things, right? And uh, the story doesn't end here as well. Uh, each, as I said, each criteria has multiple checks. So it's not just that you have to know those success criteria. There are so many success criteria and you have to check multiple things as part of each success criteria. So it becomes difficult and difficult. The second is interpretation could be different based on context. So as we saw on last uh, slide, the, based on the context, your interpretation could be different. Uh, for me, it could be, uh, if I refer the last slide, it, I, I may go to the sign up first or you may go to the individual first. So based on that, your interpretation and my interpretation could be different. So that is again one difficulty most of the uh, experts or QA teams face. And the third one is uh, checks needs to account for device type. So a website an application, it is not necessary that uh, that application is for web only. That application may have a page for mobile view, a different, a different view for mobile uh, screen. And uh, you may have to test for uh, that as well because it's a different view. It may have different uh, uh, success criteria applicable to those screens. So you may need to test that as well. And if that page has a different mobile app, that's a vastly different thing that you have to check so many different things. So uh, there are so many things uh, experts need to know as part of manual testing. Uh, the next thing we have <clears throat> a screen reader complexity. So uh, there are some most popular screen readers we have in alphabetical order. They are JAWS, NVDA, and VoiceOver. And they all have a uh, few things like they all have different shortcuts. They all have uh, some known issues. So if something something is not working on a website, it may be that uh, it has been coded wrongly on that website, but it may be that uh, there is some issue with the screen reader. We call it user agent problem with the screen reader as well. And the third one is a different ways in which the persons with disability interact with them. So it is very important that how the person is interacting with the uh, screen reader, that is also diff, uh, goes very different uh, for all the screen readers. So that adds a lot of complexity on top of all the success criteria and the context we have. So here, we, uh, uh, here the auditor makes sense that because we are saying that auditor uh, simplifies the manual audits. What all auditor does is the problems we saw in previous slides. So we solve all those problems by giving you 
by giving you step by step manual testing that what uh, testing you need to do uh, all the success criteria will list for you all the not only the success criteria uh, auditor needs to know what uh, things you will be testing and based on that it uh, remove some of the non applicable success criteria it only includes the applicable success criteria for you so that you have to don't have to test for some non applicables it manages 100% of your requirement whether you need to test uh, a single page a set of uh, pages a complete website uh, in the website as well if you want to test um, media uh, media assets you you want to test the forms you want to test models iframes it uh, manages 100% of your requirements it gives you customized tracking and reporting so in customized uh, tracking you want to know how many issues you have uh, on your website accessibility issues uh, are there any best practices or violations or you may have some uh, different different uh, uh, impact of the issues so auditor provides you all the details about that uh, all the details about uh, your success criteria how many success what are the top success criteria among the issues you have and what is the conformance level so it also provides you the conformance level how how many how many issues have been passed how many issues have been failed all those and also you can you can manage the accessibility standards as well so if you want to test with wcag 2.0 level a you can choose that you can change it to level double a you can change it to 2.1 level double a or single a as per your need so you can manage the accessibility standards as well and with our uh, recent releases we have uh, integrated it with x dev tools where you can import the uh, issues from x dev tools so you don't have to perform the automated testing again in auditor you can directly import all the issues from there and what's left to be tested you can focus on that so it saves you time there that you are not doing the same thing again and again and you are just focusing on what needs to be uh, tested now all right so let's go into demo uh, but before that uh, very quick thing i would like to know that uh, what because we have so many accessibility experts here. So what other tools you are using as, uh, as part of your accessibility testing? If you can, uh, uh, if you can write in chat, uh, that will be great. Great to know that what uh, different things we are, uh, you guys are using. So Whipple, we're getting answers. Andy, P accessibility, Wave, JAWS, Dragon, Red and Write, human user testings, NVDA. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, JAWS, VoiceOver, Talkback. So, yeah. Yeah, so Andy, Wave, NVDA, these are the common which we can see that uh, most of the people are using those. Yes, yes. All right, that's great to know. Let's go into a demo where uh, some of you may be aware of uh, X Auditor. You may have seen uh, the interface, but if you are new, so let's start from the basic. What Auditor is all about? Uh, what are the different screens and how we set up uh, it for testing? So let me quickly uh, change the resolution here. All right. Um, can you see my screen, Trishti? Yes, Pupul, we can. All right. Let me go to the home page here. So I am at the home page in, in X Auditor. Uh, in home page, you will find uh, your test runs, your test cases. You can see test cases and test runs. So let me uh, explain those terminology. Test case uh, you can consider as a, a collection of pages, uh, basically. So you 
you can add your pages, your components that how many pages you want to test. You can select uh, your standard. You can select your media type uh, or I'll say uh, digital digital media asset type. What you want to sell, what you want to test. So that that becomes uh, your one test case that you have, let's say, 10 pages, five components in a test case, and you want to test those. That becomes your test case. And test run is basically a iterative part that in a, a test case, you, uh, you from a test case, you are creating a test run which becomes your first iteration and you are testing that test run uh, as part of desktop web, let's say. Uh, so you'll have all your results. You again want to test with some other media type. So you are again creating an iteration and you are testing it with mobile web. So that is your second iteration. Also, some of the use cases like you have uh, run the first iteration, you got some issues and you have fixed the issues. You want to run another iteration to see uh, what are the results now. So in the test case, you create one more test run as part of, uh, we can say iteration. And now you are comparing how many issues you have fixed. So let's start with a test case. So here I'm, uh, I'll be creating a new test case here. Or let me go into uh, uh, production. Okay, let's go here. So I have a new test case, which I can show you. Uh, I created this for this demo, uh, all the demo. I'll go into, uh, this is my test run overview, but before that, I would like to show you Okay, so this is my uh, creation of new test case screen where you provide your test case name or description about the test case, what all pages you are testing. And uh, if you want to uh, save, your, save your results in a specific folder to make, uh, uh, to make to better arrange it. And then you can select your standard as well. So here we have uh, all the levels which we uh, which we have seen, uh, WCAG 2.0 level A, level AA, 2.1 level A, AA. And on top of that, we have all, we already have old section 508, trusted tester V5, smoke test as well. So right now I'm going with WCAG level 2.1, level AA. Then you can set the session timeout for your uh, <coughs> pages and the product uh, which you are working on. Let's say you are working on any uh, checkout flow or you are working on any uh, whatever flow you uh, it may be or product name you want to do. I'll just uh, give demo for now. I'll press next and it will give you the components. So you can add your common com components here. Uh, common components, let's say uh, we already know the website which we are creating it may have navigation uh, across the website. So it will be a common component for me. It will have header across the website, footer across the website. So those will be my uh, common components. So what I can do rather than testing all the footer navigation and header uh, as part of pages, I can add them as a separate components and those pages will not have uh, issues for those components. It will sim simplify your issues. You don't have to deal with those issues as part of every page. So I'll add some components here. I'm not adding right now uh, because I just want to show you the difference that by adding uh, components, what difference it makes to the page. And then uh, you can add pages. So from here, <clears throat> from here, I can just uh, uh, add any page. So let me, this is a demo website, which we have. Let me add a page from here. So I'll just copy this. Our name is, uh, let's say laptop, I'll add this. It also gives you to select the scope. Do you want to test the whole page? Do you want to, uh, uh, as the page area. So if I'll select page area, it will ask you for the selector that uh, which page area you want to test. If you can uh, provide a selector for that for now, let's go with a whole page. And also it, 
it asks you auditor asks you what elements are present within page so the uh, elements can be forms video audio captcha and some flashing content the reason uh, auditor asks you for these because it uh, includes the checkpoints related to if you are selecting forms only so it will include the checkpoints based on forms if you are selecting all those so it will include all the applicable checkpoints in the testing and then you can add some of the instructions like uh, on this page if i have to open a certain model or if i have to make it in a certain state and then test so i can add some instruction and then i'll add a new page i'll save my test case here and uh, my test case will be ready here so it is ready what i'll do is as i said we need to create a iteration which is a test run so we will be creating a test run here so this is my first test run I'm creating. So this is okay. Iteration one, I'll give it a name. Then you can select your digital asset type, what asset type you want to you want to test, whether it is desktop web, mobile web, native mobile, Android, iOS, all the different uh, uh, digital asset type you can select from here. So I'm selecting desktop web as uh, now release uh, versions uh, as part of uh, your product uh, on which you are working. So you can give it some of the release version. I'm giving it one uh, environment, which environment I'm testing, uh, which platform I'm testing. So let's say I'll give it uh, Windows. If I'm using any assistive technology, I can uh, uh, mention about that and in your organization if uh, there is a dedicated team for testing you want to assign this test keys this test run to someone else so you can do that uh, you can select any name from this uh, and select uh, assign this test case to that particular user for now i will assign it to me okay so this is my test run overview page you can see some of the some of the uh, data here uh, pre-populated like uh, our test run has not been started yet so status is not started this is assigned to me uh, we have total two two pages uh, one was already there uh, home page and i have added this laptop one so both are in not started there is no component have been added till now so we will be adding that if i had some screenshots uh, so screenshots would have a uh, added here the issues which will be locked so the number will keep increasing here and flagged items so uh, okay let's talk about that bit later so you'll be able to understand it here you can see some of the details what your test case is what standard you have selected and what digital asset type you have and total number of units right now those are two here you can see uh, uh, the units we have if we have some components, so those components will be part of a component tab. Right now we are in pages. So let's go, let's go with the home page. I'll just test it. So I'll hit start testing here. It will give, uh, it will uh, redirect me to the prepare page. This is the prepare page for my automated and manual testing. So the flow is that auditor will do the automated testing first. It will identify all the all the accessibility issues on your website uh, that, uh, based on the selection you had those elements form video audio capture flashing content based on this selection it will identify all the issues and give you the uh, give you the issues and then it will uh, ask you to start the manual testing so some of the issues if auditor has not identified you can you can do the manual testing as well so okay let's start with that uh, if I have to check the page, which page I am testing. So what I'll do is I'll just open this URL. It will give me uh, this uh, a new, it will open a new tab and give me the website. So this is my page, which I'm going to test. I'm good with that page. So I can go uh, and I'll start uh, testing. So it will test the page in the background and give me all the details. All right. So we have a total 27 issues on that uh, page. We can see all the issues are listed here. So uh, auditor has already found 27 issues here. And now 
uh, if you see that uh, there there was some issue with the test, you can run the automated test again. Otherwise, you can go for the manual test. So let me go to manual tests. Okay, so you can see some changes here. Now, uh, auditor started showing you how many checkpoints have been completed. So total 79 checkpoints it included based on the selection uh, we did at the time of testing or creating of test case. Out of 79, 10 has been completed with the automated testing and 12% uh, uh, our test run has been completed. You can also see uh, the checkpoints which have been completed. So these are the checkpoints, 1.1 1 .1, uh, text alternatives, time-based media adaptable. Uh, so those are completed and if uh, something is not applicable, it will just uh, mark not applicable if uh, that goes uh, pass, so it will add pass here, or if it goes fail, it will add fail here. So as it uh, mentions, the um, <coughs> meaning goes the same. And you can see automated testing has been completed here and all the issues related. All right, one more thing I would like to uh, show here is let's go to test run overview page again. Now we had 27 issues uh, on the home page without any components. Now, now let's add a couple of components so on this page. I'll uh, go into inspect quickly show where my header is. This is my header. So what I'll do, I'll go copy selector here from here and add it as a component. So here is the component I am adding header. My selector is this. My URL is this one. So I've added this one and in the same way, I will add a footer as well, sample URL. All right, so I have added two uh, components here. Now let's go uh, and test it again the home page. The reason I'm testing it again is to show you that uh, if there are any issues which are in components, so it will exclude in the in the page because those are now part of the component. So you don't have to deal with those issues as part of each page. So let's go rerun the automated test again. I'll just go and hit start testing. And see, uh, it is showing you two components found because we have added two components, both the components found and the issues are 21 right now. So all this, uh, it excluded six issues. So those six issues as are part of uh, components, which it is not showing you. Yeah, it is not showing you uh, on the home page as part of this page, because when you uh, on this page, when you go into component and do the testing, so all those issues will fall into header or footer. So it will not be part of your pages. So this is how auditor simplifies uh, the pages that you don't have to uh, deal with those issues on each page. Otherwise, what would have happened? Those six issues will be part of my home page, and then they will be part of a laptop page as well. And if you have 10 more pa uh, pages, so those will be part of all those uh, 10 pages as well. And you, you had to deal with those uh, six issues again and again and again. So what auditor is doing, it is simplifying for you that, okay, these are the components, uh, issues with components. You can, uh, you can fix those issues as part of component and then you will test again. Uh, it will mark you as fixed. All right, uh, I'll go to resume, go into test unit. We call it test unit overview page because you have just one unit, which was home page. Now on this page, you can see that uh, only automated testing is completed. Manual testing because, because we started, so it, it is in progress. And IGT testing has not been started. So we'll do all these things again now to complete this. Uh, elements within page, so not present because we have not selected these. We just selected form, so it is present and the scope is whole page. There are no screenshots as of now. We can add some of the screenshots. 
and we added two components so it is just showing you the information that both the components have been found and these are the checkpoints as i selected if i uh, go into one of the checkpoints here let's say we go into text alternative so it it gives you <clears throat> it gives you all the details about that checkpoint uh, one more thing is uh, the checkpoint is uh, you will you will be aware about the success criteria so success criteria is basically 1.1.1 .1 and now we have uh, further broken that success criteria into dq checkpoints uh, so you can see in alternative text there could be different things like alternative text can be on active images alternative text can be on informative images complex images decorative images so these are different things which can be part of which are part of text alternatives so we have divided them further into different uh, checkpoints that's why i'm uh, mentioning it again checkpoints so you can go into each checkpoint check what uh, that checkpoint is all about what what is the overview of that what testing methodology uh, we have for that checkpoint for in desktop web what you need to check and what things you need to think about there are some recommendation about that uh, what assistive technology you need to use and there are some uh, related techniques as well some best practices based on the experts we have uh, those are the best practices we suggest so we provide uh, all those details on this page so uh, the reason why we are providing all those details are that you don't have to be expert or if you are not an expert then uh, then also you can test all those uh, all those success criteria you can go one by one you go through all those uh, all those information then you check on your page whether your page is compliant with that information with those checks or not and if yes then you just make it pass if not you make it fail or if it is not applicable so you just uh, mark it as non-applicable also uh, testing methodology is uh, showing you the desktop web only because we selected desktop web if you want to see what what the testing methodology will be in mobile web so just change the digital asset type and now you will see the different uh, uh, different testing methodology now you can see uh, the details for ios devices ios 14 plus ios 13 plus so this is the difference of uh, we can have for mobile web and desktop web and okay let's say uh, let's assume you got an issue from here uh, in this in this success criteria you want to add an issue that you have got an issue so we just click on add issue now here this is a checkbox which will give you all the details so checkpoints is already selected this is the checkpoint which uh, yeah, you were there on that checkpoint and you want to add an issue based on that you will select description what could be the difference uh, description so accessibility issues could be text alternative does not include essential text and image or present same as same info as image so there could be different accessibility issues or some best practices as well which uh, which the website or web page is not following so you can add either best practices or accessibility issues so let me add text alternative is missing so it will give you uh, some recommendation to fix as soon as you will uh, select any description you go to recommendation technique so it will give you all techniques so all the techniques how to fix it what is the rule how to fix it uh, it will give you all the data re a reference as well that on dq university website uh, what are the references about this issue some background as well so it will not, not just not give you that uh, what's the issue and how to fix it it gives you all the additional information about the reference about the background as well you want to use alt attribute so it will give you information about alt attribute as well so it's all it's on your choice that it is giving you recommendation techniques and not only one it's give you you want to use aria label attribute so it, it will give you details about that and if you want to write your own recommendation so just use my own custom recommendation and uh, you can write your own recommendation here as well also in this description uh, there may be case you see that okay description is not 100% matching what you want to write as a description just uh, make it 
custom, create your own description and you are allowed to write your own custom description here so that you can convey your message uh, directly. You can also add selector, uh, the source code, some screenshot as well you can upload uh, from screenshots as well. Issue type as well you want to, uh, based on your description, based on the checkpoint you have selected, you see this is a best practice issue. A functionality issue, a user agent issue, or accessibility issue. And what is the impact? It is a blocker, critical, serious, moderate, or minor. So you can select all those uh, from here. And uh, there's one more thing, flag for review. So if you think it could be an issue, you are not sure, but you think it could be, it could be a, an issue. So you can flag it for review. Probably uh, your peer, you want to review it with your peers. You want to review it with accessibility expert. So it will give you the uh, information on your uh, overview page that you have uh, issue flagged for review. All right, so this is you know, directly, you can flag it flag for review from here as well. And uh, it continues with the same. So let's go into uh, some different compatible. Quick time check, it's uh, last 17 minutes, right? Uh -huh, okay, all right, I'll be quick. All right, so yeah, uh, the same way uh, it gives you all the details about the overview testing methodology, everything. Let me go into test on overview again. So this is where we had our components pages. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you about, we had, we discussed about the uh, customized tracking. So let me go into this uh, resume. I'll complete it for now. Uh -uh, okay. I'll go into review again. Uh, pages, start testing. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, completed. So I'll go into test run overview to show you. Uh, okay, okay, I have to, <laughs> I have to, uh, test my components as well. So let's test those very quickly. All right. Here is my photo. Okay, because I have some of the uh, issues, so I need to fix those issues and then it will be marked as complete. Let me uh, let me check one of the test runs if it is complete. This is in complete state. So the one thing which I wanted to show you is, yeah, these, these graphs. So we have uh, accessibility conformance graphs here. You can see how many of the, the issues are passed and how many issues are phased here. These are based on success criteria, the bucket level which you have selected. So those are the conformance uh, charts you can get. You can get the user impact, how many issues are critical, serious, moderate or blocker. So you'll get all those. And these are your top issues based on the uh, DQ checkpoints, you can have it with the success criteria as well. So these are the success criteria, like contrast minimum, name, role value. So this can also help you that what are the top issues with success criteria. So you can get the customized uh, tracking from this. Now, one of the thing, <clears throat> let me go again in home. One of the new features which we had is uh, IGT testing. So let me show you how it works. So what I'll do is I'll go into this page. This is the page which I had. I'll go, I'll go into XDev tools. Uh, you can see XDev tools on my screen, right? Abhin or Sashti, can you confirm? Uh, yes. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll do is I want to quickly test this page. So this is, uh, I have tested my page. 
right now this is with x score 4.6 uh, some of the some of the comparisons which we are doing is we are matching the x score so what i'll do is i'll select x score 4.4 for now and save it uh, okay back now i again rerun the scan so here are the issues i have got <clears throat> I've got and then I'll go into a uh, guided test. I'll save this. Uh, this is the, these are the guided, uh, guided tool test, uh, test, which we have available in XDev tools. So we will run one of them. Let's uh, run the table here. All right, so I have run one of the one of the guided tests. In overview, what I'll do is I'll do an export. In export, I'll select uh, save test any issues, and I'll uh, my format will be JSON, and I'll export this file. I have this file with me. Now I'll go into auditor again here and import the issues. So because I already have issues here, so I want to override those issues or if I didn't have any issues, so it will not ask, but it will all add my automated issues. So I'll override those issues. I'll select the file from here and all my issues got imported. So I, we have 27 issues. We completed one IGT. So there are total seven IGTs. One of the IGTs is completed and we didn't find any issue that in that IGT. So the thing is that <clears throat> you can you can test your igts as well as part of x dev tools and in auditor you don't have to do that again so you just need to import the file and all your data will be imported your issues will will be imported into igt uh, automated testing as well if you don't want to do automated testing in auditor you can import your data from x dev tools and it will get imported your issues will be logged automatically and see if i'll uh, this is uh, this is not uh, completed as of now. And uh, if I just uh, close this session and I come back again uh, next day or after two days, uh, I want to start. So I'll get my uh, data as it is uh, on this state. So uh, one of the one of the queries and one of the pain areas which we had with many expert was that uh, they need to maintain some Excel sheets, and if they have to switch switch on some other priority work, then they need to save that uh, data they need to again come back and see uh, where the data they left and uh, then they need to restart in most of the cases this is not the case with auditor it saves you time by auto saving all of your all your progress so that when you come back you can uh, resume your work and uh, data simplification i have already explained that how uh, components are doing the, uh, the simplification for you, how the elements uh, you can select those, uh, those elements do simplification for you. And this is one of the, uh, one of the feature which we have recently added. Okay, with this, I think uh, we should complete the demo as we are over time. So let me go back to yeah, this again. All right, so I'm done with my demo. We can have the next one, which, uh, okay, let's jump to the questions very quickly, Swishti. Yes, thank you, for, thank you so much, Vipul, for the amazing session and the demo. So we have two questions for you. Uh, one is, what kind of reports, uh, exports does X Auditor offer? As in, does it allow accessibility reports to be generated based on test run? As in, does it allow accessibility reports to be generated based on test ran? Uh, so based on test ran means uh, I'm uh, assuming it is not uh, what term I was using test run. So test runs are different. So yeah, you can you can export data from auditor based on the test runs. So each test run can give you export in the form of a CSV, in the form of JSON as well. It will give you all the details about the issues you have, all the checkpoints you have passed or failed, and uh, how many issues or uh, success criteria was involved. So it will be based on test runs, uh, the auditor term. 
Great. Um, second question is, is this tool open source? I think Abin is already uh, typing the answer for this. Abin, do you want to? Uh... Um, yeah, um, uh, this tool is right. This tool is not open source. Um, this tool has to be a paid, uh, you know, subscription. But, um, you know, um, the idea behind uh, show showcasing this tool is to kind of uh, let everyone know that you know the the option of achieving 100 percent accessibility compliance via uh, a tool which can be automated as well as uh, allow you to do manual testing is possible so that that is the intent of showcasing the tool great then i think we have reached to the end of the session Thank you everyone for joining. You can connect with us on our LinkedIn page for regular updates about our tools and services and everything about accessibility. And there is also one upcoming uh, digital accessibility conference that you can attend. And I am giving the link in the chat box. You can go and get the details there. Thank you again for joining. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.